Good afternoon students, I am back. So today we are going to study the next topic which is generally called pollination, right? So uh, in the last lecture we have generally studied about the double fertilization, right? Okay, how does the fertilization takes place between the male gametes and the female gametes? So today we are going to study about the pollination, right? What exactly is pollination and how does pollination takes place in the angiospermic plant, right? So when you talk about pollination, pollination is a process where there is a transfer of the pollen grain from anther to the stigma of the respective flower, right? So we know that one will be the male part and second will be the female part right male part will be having the anther female part will be having the respective stigma so there will be the transfer of the pollen grain from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the respective flower that process is generally called as pollination right pollination for the very first time was generally studied by the scientist Camerarius right okay so now when you talk about this pollination there are two different types of pollination First is called as self-pollination and second is called as cross-pollination, right? So two different types of pollination existed in the plant. Now when you talk about self-pollination, self-pollination is also called as autogamy, where auto stands for yourself and gamy stands for marriage, right? So self-pollination is a type of a pollination where there is a transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of the same flower. That is generally called as self-pollination or we generally call it as autogamy, where the self marriage takes place that is nothing but autogamy right okay now this self-pollination or autogamy is of two important types right first one is generally called as autogamy and second one is generally called as gitinogamy right right now when you talk about autogamy auto is self and gamy is marriage right so the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of same flower of same plant is generally called as autogamy right there is a transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the same flower of same plant is generally called as what is called autogamy second is generally called as gitinogamy Gitino stands for neighbor and gamy stands for marriage, right? So what is gitinogamy? The transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower but of same mother plant is generally called as gitinogamy, right? So gitinogamy says that there is a transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower but of same mother plant that is generally called as gitinogamy, right? That's what all about your introduction about the self-pollination. When you talk about the cross-pollination, the second part, cross-pollination the transfer of pollen the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower of another plant is generally called as cross pollination right so example there are two different kinds of a plants right okay so the pollen grain from this plant that is the pollen grain from the anther of this plant will get deposited on the stigma of flower of another plant as there are <clears throat> two different plants and as there are two different flower the process is generally called as cross pollination right now cross pollination is also of two important types and cross pollination is also called as allogamy allo stands for different and gamy stands for marriage right so the first type is generally called as xenogamy and second is generally called as hybridization now what do you mean by xenogamy right xenogamy means the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower of another plant belonging to the same species is generally called as xenogamy right and second is hybridization the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower of another plant belonging to two different species is generally called as hybridization right so you all know that xenogamy and hybridization are just opposite of each other if there are uh, two different plants belonging to the same species it is xenogamy two different plants belonging to two different species then it is generally called hybridization that's all about your cross pollination
Now let's have a talk about the different agencies which are responsible for the process of the pollination, right? What do you mean by agencies? There are certain factors which are responsible for carrying out the pollination. So the agencies required for the pollination are of two important type, abiotic agencies and biotic agencies, right? Abiotic, you know very well, non-living and biotic is nothing but your living. Right. So abiotic factors generally includes your air, wind, water, etc. Right. OK. And your biotic factors are the living factors such as your insects are there, birds are there, bats are there, snails are there, etc. So let's begin with the very first one that is called abiotic agencies. That is abiotic agencies for the pollinations are as follows. Number one, anemophily. Right. Anemophily is a type of a pollination which generally takes place with the help of the air or wind, right? So the pollination which generally takes place with the help of the air or wind is generally called as anemophily. Now let's list down the different floral adaptations which are required for anemophily, right? The first one is the flowers are usually large, right? Isn't it? The flowers are usually large, numerous and inconspicuous, right? The flowers should be large in size, they should be numerous in a plenty number and they should be inconspicuous, right? That is clearly not visible, right? Next, stamens should be long, right? The stamens should be long and they should be having the long filament and versatile anther, right? The stamen should be having a long filament, okay, and they should be having a versatile anther. Versatile anther means the anther should be free with the pollen grain, right? Next one, third point, the pollen grain should be smooth, dry and light in weight, right? The pollen grain should be smooth, they should be very dry and they should be light in weight. Why they should be light in weight? So that they, either they are easily carried away with the help of the air. Right. Okay. What about the stigma? The stigma should be generally branched. It should be hairy or feathery. Right. Obviously, it is going to be sticky, hairy, feathery or branched. Why it should be sticky, hairy, feathery or branched? So that the pollen grain gets come and stuck at the hairy or the feathery stigma. Right. These are all the different types of the floral adaptations which are required for the anemophily. Also, fifth point says that the nectar gland or yeah, the nectar gland or smell or fragrance is generally absent here. The flowers will not generally have a pleasant smell and they will show the absence of the nectar gland. Right. That is called anemophily. The best example for the anemophily are sugarcane, jowar, maize, bajra, etc. These are the plants which generally undergo anemophily. Right. And the flowers are generally called as anemophilous flower. Okay, second one is generally called as hydrophily. Now we get a clear cut word that is hydro stands for water, right? So the pollination which generally takes place with the help of the water is generally called as hydrophily, right? Now let's list down the different types of the floral adaptations required for the hydrophily, right? Number one, here the flowers are generally large. They are unisexual and inconspicuous. Why they are unisexual? They might be having only one sex organ, right? Okay, now when you talk about the stigma, yes, what obviously the stigma will be sticky in nature and it would be generally long, right? Okay, now when you talk about the hydrophily, it says that in plants with the submerged flowers, right? In a plants with submerged female flower, the specific specific gravity of the pollen grain is generally equal or greater than the water, right? But in a plants with floating female flowers, the specific gravity of the pollen grain is usually lesser than that of the water, right? Okay, so it may be in the submerged female flower or it may be in the floating female flower, right? So here the factor which is depending is specific gravity, right? Okay, now there are two important types of the hydrophily. One is generally called as hypohydrophily and second is generally called as epihydrophily, correct? Hypohydrophily is a type of a pollination which is going to take place with the help of the water which takes place in a flowers which are submerged, right? Okay, it takes place in a submerged flower bearing, 
right it is generally taking place in a submerged flower bearing hydrophytes right hydrophytes are the plants which are generally present in the water which are generally having submerged flower that is generally called as hypohydrophily it is generally seen in submerged flowers which are generally present below the water surface right the best part of the example is ceratophyllum right second is generally called as epihydrophily epihydrophily is a type of a hydrophily which takes place above the water surface right that is the pollination is generally going to takes place above the water surface and the best example for it is wellis naria Now let's talk about the biotic factors. Biotic factors are the living factors. The number one is entomophily. Entomophily is a type of a pollination which generally takes place with the help of the insect, right? So insect pollination is generally called as entomophily and the study of insect is called as entomology. Now let's have a floral adaptation for the entomophily. Here, first point, the flowers are usually large, attractive, bright in color. Right, the flowers are quite large and they are bright attractive in color. Why they are bright attractive in color? So that it can attract the insect for the pollination. Right, okay. Now, when you talk about the pollen green, right, the pollen greens are usually rough and spiny and shows spiny exine. Right, now what is the advantage of having the spiny exine? It is that it can generally attract the insect, right, it can get stuck to the pollen grain and that can help into the pollination right okay next when you talk about the stigma yes stigma is generally sticky right it is going to be sticky and yes it is generally having a sticky appearance on the stigma due to the pectocellulose sugar right okay now <clears throat> when you talk about your anthers here the anthers are also generally free or versatile right now in order to undergo this entomophily there are certain plants which generally undergo a special mechanism that special mechanism is generally called as lever mechanism in salvia right okay salvia is a plant it's a flowering plant and there the lever mechanism takes place now let's have a talk about lever mechanism in salvia right okay now usually there are certain plants when you talk about salvia Salvia. salvia is a type of a bisexual and protendrous plant right bisexual having both the sex organ male and the female protendrous means here the androecium is going to mature first and then followed by the gynoecium that is first the anthers will mature and then followed by the stigma, right? Okay, now as the flower is bisexual, it is going to have two stamens, right? Okay, now this two stamens will be having a bifurcate connective right okay now the connective generally has the two parts one is generally called as the upper part of the connecting having the fertile anther and the lower part of the connecting which is having the sterile anther now whenever the flower whenever the uh, insect enters into the flower right what happens is that isn't it the lower part of the uh, connective that is the sterile part right okay the is generally pushed off and the upper part of the anther is generally bent downwards right so as the upper part which is the anther which is the uh, what you can say which is the fertile part generally gets broken uh, generally gets bent down right now it get generally gets connected or in contact with the body of the insect that is the upper fertile part of the anther generally comes in contact with the body of the insect and the pollen grains are dusted there now when the same insect goes on the another flower with a matured gynoecium the stigma is now ready to accept the pollen grain on its respective stigma this process is called lever mechanism in salvia it is also called as tube pipe mechanism okay so the best example of for entomophily is salvia that undergoes lever mechanism or tube pipe mechanism and other example are jasmine rose etc next second one which is generally called <clears throat> ornithophily right now when you talk about ornithophily the pollination which generally takes place with the help of the birds is generally called as ornithophily now let's let's list down the floral adaptation for ornithophily here the flowers are large they are attractive in color so that they can attract the birds for the pollination correct isn't it now here the flower does not contain any kind of a fragrance right 
why it does not contain fragrance because birds generally have a poor sensation of the smell right okay now here the pollen grains are generally sticky right okay pollen grains will be generally uh, i mean to say pollen grains will be versatile they will be free and also the stigma will be sticky in nature but the major characteristic feature of this uh, plants is that the corolla is tubular or funnel shape right why it is generally tubular or funnel shaped so that the beak of the bird generally enters or penetrates inside the funnel shape corolla and that becomes easy for the pollination right now the last point says that they generally have a nectar gland and it generally produces a large amount of nectar and that large amount of sugary nectar is generally used as a drink by the birds okay so that's what all about your ornithophily ornithophily generally takes place with the help of the birds correct okay the best example is cotton that is your bombyx mori right silk cotton and the last one third one is generally called as third pollination is generally called as your uh, what we say chiracterophily right now chiracterophily is a type of a pollination which generally takes place with the help of the bats right okay now let's have a floral adaptation for the chiracterophily here also the flowers are generally large right okay they are generally large or they might be some somewhat small also right okay now when you talk about this uh, plants the plants or the flowers are usually nocturnal inhabited nocturnal means the flowers generally open during the night time right okay next the flowers generally produces a rotten fruit or rotten fermenting fruity odor from the flower due to which the bats are generally attracted towards the flower and this type of a flower generally produces a large number of stamen and as there are a large number of stamen there will be a large number of the pollen grain right okay the best example for the chiracterophily is generally edensonia or bohemia these are the certain plants which generally undergoes your chiracterophily so the three important bi biotic agencies for the pollination are entomophily ornithophily and chiracterophily entomophily taking place with the help of the insect ornithophily taking place with the help of the bird and chiracterophily taking place with the help of the bats one more is there you can add up which is generally called as melecophily melecophily is a type of a pollination which generally takes place with the help of a snail right snails you can see in the rainy season which are generally present all over the mud right in the sand and the best example is chrysanthemum mum So here we complete the topic which is called pollination that is self pollination and cross pollination self pollination are of two type that is autogamy and gynogamy cross pollination are again of two important types xenogamy and hybridization then we saw the agencies of pollination that is abiotic and biotic abiotic are two that is anemophily and hydrophily anemophily with the help of wind or air and hydrophily with the help of the water hydrophily is having two types that is hypohydrophily and epihydrophily then abiotic factors are classified into three important part that is entomophily ornithophily chiracterophily and melecophily right okay entomophily taking place with the help of insect ornithophily taking place with the help of the bird chiracterophily taking place with the help of the bats and melecophily taking place with the help of the snake thank you very much